Hello everyone, my name is Florian Trulhai, lecturer at the Department of Applied Social Sciences, European University of Tirana. Today I will present my paper, titled it, The Socialist Party of Albania and its Rising Populist Statecraft, a critique from a normative perspective. The rise of socialist parties and populism is a complex and multifaceted phenomenon observed in many countries worldwide in recent years. While the two movements share some similarities, they also have significant differences. Socialist parties typically advocate for a more egalitarian society, where the government plays a more prominent role in ensuring wealth and resources are distributed fairly. This stance can include policies such as progressive taxation, universal health care, and publicly funded education. Socialists generally believe that capitalism is inherently exploitative and that government intervention is necessary to prevent the wealth elite from accumulating too much power and wealth at the expense of the rest of society. Populist movements, on the other hand, are often characterized by their opposition to the established political and economic elites and their focus on appealing to the interests and concerns of ordinary people. Populists often claim to represent the society's silent majority or forgotten segments. They may use rhetoric that demonize other groups seen as threats to the interests of the real citizens. Populists may also advocate for policies perceived as being in the interests of ordinary people, such as protectionist trade policies, tighter immigration control, or increased social welfare spending. In the recent years, Albania has seen the rise of Socialist Party and its populist gist. SP leader Edi Rama has served as Prime Minister since 2013. The SP has positioned itself as a center-left party that advocates for social welfare policies, increased public investment and equal distribution of wealth. It has also focused on fighting corruption and improving Albania's image on the international stage. However, Rama's political style is ultimately superficial and he failed to address underlying problems in Albanian political and economic system, and Albania remains one of the poorest countries in Europe with higher unemployment, corruption and inequality levels. In addition, Rama populist goal was to gain support while failing to follow through on his promises. For example, his government has been criticized for not tackling corruption and organized crime and failing to make significant progress in education, healthcare and social welfare. While the Rama populist political style has successfully won the support of many Albanians, there are concerns that it may not be enough to address the country's long-term problems. Achieving less progress will likely require more sustained and substantive reforms in Albanian political and economic system. Addressing this issue would be at the heart of this article that will follow. The SP as a left government, which should have prioritized mitigating inequality, records as a government balance a deepening of poverty based on international reports, not to mention the mess immigration of the educated individuals where according to the institute of statistics albanian institute of statistics in the last decades 53 percent of those who fled had secondary and uh, tertiary education on the other hand seen again from the perspective of left government which should focus on strengthening the state apparatus the public-private partnership remains a disturbing phenomenon for the SP's economic policies. Through PPPs, tens of millions of euros from Albanian taxes go to foreign investors from tenders for concessions and incinerators to hospital service which hit an essential part of the budget of the state budget. Let us talk for a moment on the PPP phenomenon that has characterize the policies, the politics of the SP in two governing mandates to convey to the reader a point of view of the Albanian left compared to the Rolsian reasonable, more reasonable standards. During the last 10 years, the government in Albania have acted through the application of circuit agreements with businesses or, in other words, confidentials. 
According to Birn, public authorities in Albania, including central government institution and independent ones, have decided to, to keep 236 public procurement contracts secret. Of these 236 confidential contracts from 2008 to 2018, in the PDLS coalition period, there were a total of 20 classified contracts. While during the 2013-2017 periods of SP, LSI government and the Socialist Party government from 2018 onwards, there were 216 confidential contracts. The historical record is held by 2018 with 76 confidential contracts. These contracts are agreements concluded regarding liberalization, privatization and deregulation in the service sector. It should be clear to everyone that contracts of this type fundamentally interfere in the life of every citizen and bring negative consequences to the state budget, limiting competition between economic operators and bringing additional costs to taxpayers. The lack of public discussion and information on the content of these contracts is not a limitation of democracy, but its final annulment regardless of the motivation that may lie behind them. The secret talks regarding this contract are in the hands of the government and some investors selected by it as the most suitable who decide how Albania will have to be in the coming decades. Regardless of the content, this practice remains disturbing and equally disturbing because a left government applies such a practice. The other element of concern is PPPs. In his definition of the state, Thomas Hobbes envisioned it as a monster where each individual surrenders his liberties to live in a security and peace. The act was voluntarily and necessary to avoid an even greater evil, which is chaos and violence against all. Today, Leviathan, how Hobbes called uh, his hypothetical state, is no longer the state but the PPPs, which use the state to secure confidential agreements which not only expand their interests and profits but strengthen them even more at the expense of the public interest. The problem is that no one has voluntarily surrendered any part of their freedom to this new Leviathan. The latter is neither predeterminated in any government program nor legitimized by any democratic means. It is imposed under this condition the decision making of SP be read as nothing else but not as more reasonable. To conclude this short intervention, the analysis focused on SP role in promoting the principle of left are the change of the system. The SP government led by Edrama was a guided democracy or formally democratic government that de facto functions as an autocracy as long as the Rolsian formula, the most reasonable for, for us, has never been applied because no prerequisite for fulfilling this principle has been undertaken. Thank you for your attention and see you in other conferences.